and picking up on the work of the agencies, and in particular how technology is being and innovation is being leveraged to change the citizens' experience with government to meet the mission and the needs of citizenry. Uh, what are you doing in the area of improving citizen and business facing transactions? And where I'm going with this is, could you talk more about the digital government strategy of the presidents and maybe how you're building the mobile services platform? Well, it's, it's uh, I'll, I'll segue into, into something uh, we just recently announced, oh. which is uh, we, we um, I, I actually alluded to this in a, in a, in a congressional hearing uh, earlier this year, and it was um, represented in the president's uh, FY15 budget. But uh, we recently announced the creation of a new capacity within my office called the digital mm -hmm. service. Mm -hmm. And uh, the digital service, um, which is uh, which is led by a, um, a private sector guy named Mikey Dickerson, who, who comes um, from a very impressive career in the private sector, uh, but also helped on the um, uh, on guiding uh, the Department of Health and Human Services on fixing healthcare.gov, um, really, you know, shows an example of how a very small number of people can come into government and working side by side with those great government people change the context and the environment in which they work to produce results. And so, part of this. Um, Part of this announcement was really about not only Mikey joining the team, but we uh, uh, we laid out kind of a, a, a plan and a set of guidelines for agencies around how they more smartly implement technology. Uh, we uh, with the announcement, we we released two documents um, that actually we worked on very closely with the private sector and and uh, and the public sector. Uh, the first document we call the Digital Services Playbook, which has 13 steps on that we expect agencies to. Uh, to adhere to when delivering these digital services, and they're meant, they they dovetail very much into the the kind of how are we doing more citizen facing, customer centric uh, services in the way we implement technology, um, and these uh, these all these. This document actually can be found up on playbook.cio.gov, mm -hmm. um, and we've had a very, very exciting uh, rollout and, and lots of visitors and feedback. Um, the the playbook's actually up for public comment, so we, we welcome even more people giving us feedback on it. Uh, the second thing we released, and I think this is a, another very game-changing uh, document, which is uh, we call it the Tech FAR, um, and the oh. FAR is the Federal Acquisition yeah. oh. Requirements, which is a, about a 2,000-page, very, uh, very, very complicated document, <laughs> to say the least, yeah. uh, on how we buy and implement technology in the government. And what we what we noticed was when you go into an agency and find a person who's doing innovative things, and you ask them, "Well, how are you using the FAR?" Like it just doesn't seem like that's the the normal way people use yeah. the FAR in government. What they'll tell you is that the FAR is quite flexible. That there are, <laughs> there are areas yeah. of the FAR that that give you lots of ability yeah. to do things the way you want to do them. And what you've you, what you see is it that agencies tend to uh, have more kind of cultural underpinnings or, you know, that the, the way I've done things in the past is a recipe for doing things in the future and less about how am I implementing 21st century ways and approaches to mm -hmm. get this done. And so what the tech FAR represents is not a rewrite of the FAR. It's not mm -hmm. new regulations. It's nothing but a uh, – it's really us pulling our favorite sections of the FAR uh, and more importantly, uh, putting uh, side by side with those favorite sections uh, examples of agencies that have used those sections to do Smart. innovative things. And so what we want to do is give give those innovators out there in government, give the people that want to do things in a new way, you know, take the playbook, follow the steps of the playbook, and then when you have a question about how to get that done, re reference the tech FAR and go say, this is how I, this is where I can use the federal acquisition requirements to my benefit to do things in a more agile, modular, 21st century way. The way that modern software companies and technology companies implement their work today is is through these same guidelines, and so mm -hmm. what we think this is, you know, it's one important first step, but it'll be, I think, a catalyzing moment for the way agencies implement technology. And in, on, you know, in a very limited way, this year we're going to pick off, and we're still working on what this list looks like. We're going to pick off the some high impact uh, citizen facing mm -hmm. uh, programs and initiatives, and deploy the the digital services team, which we're growing right now and hiring for, um, to to work with those agencies on implementing those things. Um, so we're excited about the, I'm very excited about where this is going to lead. 
So how many folks will you have in the digital uh, services area? This year, uh, we plan on having about seven to ten people. Okay. Um, and uh, But in the 15, and we're doing that with existing funding, in the mm-hmm. 15 uh, budget requests, we ask for a pretty, you know, in the context of government, a Modest. nominal mm-hmm. investment of $20 million um, to grow that team to about 25 people. Mm-hmm. Uh, it... it uh, all signs are, are pointing to, to pretty good congressional support around mm-hmm. this effort. And some of the early markup we're seeing in the budget is is uh, getting behind this. And so we're, I mean, encouraged, That's knock great. on wood, yeah. that we uh, we can get uh, we can get support and, and grow this team in the in the way we want to see it grow. And other ways you're you're, you're helping out, um, get, adding value, maximizing the value of federal IT. I'm interested in how you're expanding the use of strategic sourcing solutions and also shared services in your efforts. Can you expand on that? Yeah, one of the one of the things we found in portfolio stat mm-hmm. when working with the agencies was going in and talking to them about commodity IT. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I use that commodity phrase very loosely because I know all IT is kind of unique in its implementation. But you know, we can generally say that. You know, cell phone service or mm-hmm. email systems or things like that are roughly commodity. What what we found out was that agencies weren't maximizing their buying mm-hmm. power, and they weren't using uh, the the collective will of not only their department but the whole mm-hmm. of government to maximize the return on investment in this in this in this realm of IT. And so we, the portfolio stat conversation really started around. How do you go and do this commodity consolidation? And that led very naturally to a conversation about strategic sourcing, which is should we do more across government to to get a better price on some of these things that we're we're driving? And so we're actively working with uh, with the off. There's an office within OMB called the Office of Federal Procurement mm-hmm. Policy, um, and with the General Services Administration, the procurement teams over there to start to uh, do the work. And in some cases, we've implemented uh, things like government wide mobile contracts we call the family plan for government or (laughs) things like that where we're starting to to pick off these opportunities around strategic sourcing to drive um, better pricing. In some cases, agencies are able to beat some of the prices we're able to do, um, but it it sets a new target for people to say you should at least hit this, Mm -hmm. if not lower, Mm -hmm. uh, in the work you do. And and this is a great way of of showing that, that this smart use of technology can can drive some of this stuff out. The other side benefit you end up getting in this space is that when when an agency has a thousand ways of buying mobile, you know, mobile devices, that means they have nine hundred ninety nine too many contracting <laughs> officials writing contracts, um, and so you free up their work yeah. too, and you get this ancillary downstream benefit through strategic sourcing. Um, and then the other side of strategic sourcing, of course, is shared service centers mm-hmm. and looking at um, doing this. The the work we've we've launched and we're working through as part of this year's portfolio stat. Uh, expanding the data work onto the management side through an effort we call benchmarking is really about looking at some of the, getting benchmarks across government to understand some of these pricing dynamics and what do those look like uh, within within more commodity categories than just uh, than just IT. So you know, oftentimes when you face a, you know, a shared service, it's not just the, the technology. It's it's looking at, like, what's my fully burdened cost of doing yes. HR transactions on the human resource side? Or if I'm doing financial track, uh, you know, transactions, that's a, there's, there's CFO functions that underlie that um, broad, more broadly than IT. And so you need a, a broader set of decision metrics to be able to decide, am I getting the best bang for my buck when I move to a shared service center? And so this is, we're starting to really kind of gather the data and build the muscle mm-hmm. now to be able to analyze that. Mm-hmm. 